just just want to be. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful evening, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for everybody who's come, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray we would each get what we need, Lord God. Walk away with what helps us this week to serve you more, Lord God. Lord, not just random teaching that goes into the air and settles somewhere who knows where, Lord God, and, and just disappears in another sea of teaching, Lord God. But I pray a time, Lord God, that would set our minds, Lord, and showing us what we need to do, Lord, for our lives. I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just worship just for a minute. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. it up with them, okay, <laughs> and there are some that are literally just like small little imps that are really not much more than just kind of an urge, just kind of a push for you to do something. Just annoying. Yeah, just, just, just annoying, just, just kind of these little annoying things, and uh, <clears throat> here's what usually happens with us, we, we end up with what call, what's called, I call them anyway, familiar spirits, and I call them familiar spirits because you're familiar with them, and they're familiar with you, okay? And uh, they're around you so much, especially growing up. So if you grow up in a household 
that has a lot of drunkenness and things like that, people say, oh, you know, it's, it's genetic. Well, I don't know if it's genetic so much as growing up around that spirit, you get used to it. And you get so comfortable with it, it seems normal. In fact, sometimes it will seem abnormal when it's not there. Okay? So, uh, so how do we deal with familiar spirits? And familiar spirits are, 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 are kind of hard to deal with because they seem too much like yourself. So when you're, when, when, you're, when you're trying to deal with one, you're going, well, you know, that's just me. I'm just angry. No, maybe it's the spirit of anger. But you're angry, but you're so used to it, it seems like you. And you, the problem is you can't fight yourself. Okay? <clears throat> you can fight an external foe, but you can't fight yourself. Which is why in many cases they, they try to make these uh, unfair identification uh, statements. <clears throat> like, for example, as we know, there are people out there who have uh, temptation toward homosexual acts. Well, yeah, we all have temptation toward things that are wrong, okay? There's homosexual temptation, there's heterosexual temptation, there's all, all levels of temptation. And quite honestly, <clears throat> there's a lot of things pushing us to do wrong in the sexual realm. And there's a lot of things wrong to do. In fact, it's a lot easier to divide, define what's right than it is what's wrong, okay? Um, I'll just let you know. You can have sex with the person you're married to for, you know, for the rest of your life. <laughs> and that's it, okay? There's nothing else to find in the Bible as where sex is okay. You know, and it's not okay between someone, not your wife, and it's not okay between, uh, you know, two people of the same sex, and it's not okay in, you know, a dozen other circumstances I won't get into. <clears throat> but there's a lot of these pushes trying to push you the wrong direction. But if you're used to it, if you live with it for a long period of time, especially growing up with it, it will seem so familiar that you'll have difficulty fighting it. Because it'll just seem like part of you. Well, I'm just an angry person. How do I disown myself? And there's this process we go through where God separates us from the world, the devil, and sin. So we can see who we are, so we can live ourselves. And let me tell you something. The world tries to present Christians as these people who are all, all act the same, all talk the same, you're all a bunch of sheep. No, actually, real Christians are the most unique individual people on the planet. Because God wants to bring out your, your, your own individual uniqueness because that's why he made you. He made you unique. He made you individual. That's when we say, I want to be like Jesus, I want to be like Jesus in character, not in personality. I don't want to be a little clone of Jesus in personality because there's already a Jesus. He made me and made me unique and special the way I am. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to let my personality be corrupted to kind of that dark side of a personality. I mean, I could be a hard driving person and pressing toward, you know, accomplishing things, but that could be perverted into, you know, anger, jealousy, rage, or even just stepping over other people to get where you, where you want to go, okay? <clears throat> but we want to walk in the fullness of our personality. Uh, I was listening to Dr. Laura. You know, everybody was listening to Dr. Laura, at least some, you know. Uh, didn't always agree with her advice, but I'm glad she's out there giving it because I agreed with a lot of it, okay? And this woman called in and she said, my husband, he is so sweet and he is so precious. He's like a big teddy bear. And I love him so much and, and all this. He says, but there's this one case, you know, this one situation where he just won't stand up for himself. And I just don't know what to do. He won't stand up. He won't, he won't you know, make this big stand. And finally she said, okay, let me get this straight. You married this guy because he's a big teddy bear. And now you don't like him because he's a big teddy bear. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? We're, we're not going to be all things. Nobody's going to be all things. I'm not going to be sweet, kind, and lovable, and also be a hard-driving politician, CEO of a, of a company, or any of those kind of things. The, the two are incompatible. And it's okay. It's okay that, that, that some of us, like Brother Faulkner, who's going to be here in a minute, will be up there just preaching like a windmill. I don't have to duplicate Brother Faulkner. I don't want to duplicate Brother Faulkner. I already got him. He's here. Okay? So he can get up and preach like a windmill and all teach, you know? And every now and then I get up and preach like a windmill just to, just to prove I can do it. Every now and then he sits down and teaches. He can prove he can do it. But uh, God wants us individual. He wants us unique. 
But he doesn't want us falling, falling for the traps of the enemy. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the traps of the enemy and how they impact you individually. So, for example, the uh, I personally make a distinction between what I would call demons and spirits. I don't know if there's a, a distinction there. I don't see it specifically in the Bible. But the Bible really doesn't talk about the hierarchy of, of demons anyway. I just find it easier for my own understanding. And here's the way I, I, I would describe it. I think it'll help you. Okay? Uh, I had a friend that uh, was, uh, before he got saved, he was a Satanist high priest. In fact, he was high priest over this area. Okay? And he got saved and... <clears throat> He came in with a lot of knowledge in the demonic realm. Okay, he came into Christianity, a lot of knowledge in the demonic realm, and uh, even the ability to see demons. So, you know, I'd ask him, he said, well, are there demons around here? He said, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, all the time. He said, you know, there, there's no point worrying about them. They're, they're, they're here. You know, they have no power over you unless, you know, the Holy Spirit specifically allows them to, or you give them power. He said, don't worry about them. And um, he's actually, I actually know someone else now that has the same, same uh, gifting, and he said, you don't want that gifting. It's not very pleasant. <laughs> but uh, I asked him, I said, well, how does it work? And this is the way he described it, and I'm taking this from a Satanist. You can take it with a grain of salt, because if it helps you um, to deal with uh, uh, your own life, okay, um, then, then I hope it does. And... What I want is you to move beyond where you're at. You know, the, the, the devil will use these familiar things. Let's put it this way. You know the old saying, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you, or show me, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Well, how many of you, the devil's fooled you like a hundred times, and you're like, shame on me, shame on me, shame on me. <laughs> well, we don't want to do that anymore because the devil learns there's certain things that just kind of, that's your little button. He just has to push it, and bam, there you go. You're on the ground going, ah, I did it again. And then you start thinking, if I just would get over this one thing, I'd be in victory. Well, no. <laughs> it's okay to think that, and you need to get over that one thing, and it really is a barrier. It really is. But you get over that one thing, and the devil hits you somewhere else. Okay? He, and, and, and he's got something else to hit you with. So instead of worrying about that one thing, we want to know how to walk in the spirit rather than how to defeat a particular foe. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's walking in the spirit and recognizing the spirit that we want. So uh, <clears throat> here's how I put it. He said, a demon maybe will just kind of uh, send out a little thought. That little thought will like perch on your shoulder and just whisper that thought into your ear. Just some little thought. You know, your boss is a jerk. Okay, something like that, you know. Your wife doesn't love you as much as you think, you know. She's kind of mean, you know, whatever. Some little thought. <laughs> okay? And that little thought goes into your head. And it has a little bit of, thoughts have a little bit of spiritual energy to them. Okay, I, I don't know how else to put it. I don't want to sound too mystical because it's really not. But then you'll think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My boss is kind of a jerk. Well, now you've just kind of doubled that thought, right? <laughs> okay. And before you know it, you start thinking about it more and more and more and more. And I don't know how to describe it except that, that grouping of thoughts will actually kind of take on a life of its own, won't it? I kind of like to call that spirits. I, I don't know that they're demons. I, I, don't know, I don't know what to call them. But they're there and they're kind of present. And, and they, they reach a point where they're kind of having their own little life to them. And they, they, and they get hard to get away from, don't they? Okay? And you're sitting there and, and, and your mind just, you know, and, and especially when you try to pray, right? When you try to pray, this thing kicks up, you know? So, uh, <clears throat> as those things kind of get root in your heart and in your spirit, they can be pretty hard to shake free. And <clears throat> I want to encourage you that these things, whether you want to call them demons or spirits or whatever, you can perceive them as separate entities from yourself and deal with them that way. Okay? Now, I want to ask you a question, and I'm, I'm going to guess that the answer to this, probably everyone in the room is going to be yes. Okay? So you don't need to raise your hand or anything. But how many of you have been, <clears throat> you say, man, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to spend time in prayer. And you get down and you start praying, oh, Lord, you know. <clears throat> and uh, 
And the Lord starts kind of stirring your heart. But after a while, those thoughts just kind of start kicking up. And they start stirring around in you. And you've got all things going on. It could be a busyness, you know, a, a baby thinking about, did I turn the, you know, gas off my house or something like that. Or it could be, you know, my husband, this, rah, rah, rah. And after a while, you start noticing, well, you know, the way this is kicking up is a little more than just my thought processes, because it's really kind of hitting a high point when I pray, isn't it? Just, you know, it's rising up. And, and, and you go, oh, you know, and you pray some more, and, and you pray with a little more intensity. And after a while, as you pray, you'll suddenly feel this, uh, uh, what's a, a shift? I don't know how else to describe it, a, a, a spiritual shift. And suddenly it'll be gone. Okay? I could be crazy. How many of you had that happen? You know what I'm talking about, okay? And see, that's the strength I want to give you, is those things can't fight you forever. They can fight you for a time, but if you persevere, eventually they're going to leave. Okay? And, and that, that, that little ball of thoughts, that little knot of thoughts, you can, you can call it little bitty demons, little baby demons, I don't know, you know, what are you going to call them? Spirits, I like to call them, you know. They're, they're not really a demon, but they're not really, but they exist, you know. You can deal with them, and they will leave as an entity, won't they? And you'll feel them leave. You just go, oh. That felt I, I feel different now. I can pray, and suddenly you get your second wind, and you can pray another, you know, for, for, for another good time period, because you now feel the, the, this release. And this is one of the most important things that, that to learn, is to identify in your own thought processes when that's going on, and just go, you know, if I press through, if I persevere, I'm going to knock this thing out. This thing's going to go. <clears throat> Now, just so you, so you know, as these things kind of have a life of their own, however you want to look at it, these are the things that go out and cause trouble for you. And you will find, <clears throat> it's like you're thinking bad thoughts about your husband, your wife, whatever. If you let those things stay and fester, they, they're, they're more than just thoughts. They're going out and bugging your wife, and now she's thinking bad things about you back again, you know. And, and you have these whole households that there's this, you know, anger going back and forth to the point where it's like, I don't even know where we're angry anymore. I just, we're just angry, <laughs> you know. We're just mad at each other all the time, you know. And, and, and it's this kind of spirit going around the house. And let me tell you something. <clears throat> the first step in those kind of situations is not to try to solve the issues because the issues are not the problem. The first step is to get rid of the spirit. There, there, there's no point in trying to say, you know, you're, you're fighting with your spouse about, you know, the way you filled the car up or the way you squeezed the toothpaste tube. It will ne It's not about the to toothpaste tube, folks. Oh, yes, it <laughs> <laughs> Shot down. <laughs> yes, it is. It, 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 it's his spirit that keeps... And once that spirit is broken, the other things will start falling into place. They start, they'll start falling into place. If I allow you to show, the other day, um, there was a, there was just an atmosphere. It was just an atmosphere. Um, and and uh, Kathy and I were both irritated. Let's come over here, Ruff. <laughs> that we put you on tape. People are watching these tapes. They tell me. <laughs> that that there, there's an atmosphere. There's a force. You, as you shared, words have force. They have power. The power of life and death is in the tongue. That's what the Bible says. We can, we can energize somebody in a positive way, or we can literally deflate them and take the energy right out of their, you know. Uh, the, the Bible said there's power in the words that we say, and whether they're faith-filled or they're fear. How, how many's ever, how many's ever got afraid of something? Uh, did you feel weak in the knees and, and all of a sudden normal energies dissipated? Fear has a way of, of diminishing you. Words have a way of determining whether you are fearful or faithful. And, and, uh, and, and the enemy uh, forces will operate in fear. But Jesus spoke at times about a spirit of fear. There's, I, I, there's atmospheres that, that contain that. The other day, um, I don't know and exactly what was happening, but Kathy said to me, let's just stop right now. We were both, our voices were rising just a little bit. She said, let's just stop right now. She said, we're, we're not mad at each other. We're not, there's nothing to be upset about. 
there's, there's, a, there's a spirit. Uh, there's an atmosphere here. This has not, not been invited into our setting. Let's just stop and pray about this. Uh, let's not let it take advantage of us. Uh, the Bible said, be not, you know, don't be ignorant of Satan's uh, devices, lest he take advantage of you. And, and, and you don't want him to have leverage in your life and, and, and create an atmosphere. And, and, and I'm just uh, sharing some things about this. She said, let's pray. It wasn't about the issue, like you said, that was at hand, even though what we were talking about. It was the atmosphere that was creating a, a, uh, a rising level of voice, irritation. And sometimes if you realize, you're really not mad at your husband or your wife. There's, there's another uh, a spiritual force operating. Have you ever walked into a room and you could feel the animosity? Mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, and, uh, if someone's just passed away and there's people that are angry. There's people that are angry about the setting and there's other people that want to come and be, they're, they're thinking about good memories and sweet thoughts. And then other people are angry and resentful. And you can feel, you can walk into a room and feel the animosity and the anger and the resentment that some people have held. And then you can, uh, I was in a, I was in a, um, and I'll say in the last year, I've been in different memorials and, and, and funerals, uh, ministry, and I have, uh, you can walk in the room and feel this peace in some settings, and I'm talking about they know where the person that they love is gone, they're friendly with each other, everybody's hugging, they're, they're consoling each other, and it is so sweet and you can feel that atmosphere. I've walked into that atmosphere. You can feel, nobody's saying a word, but man, you can feel the tension. You can feel the anger. You can feel the resentment. You can, you, they, they weren't talking because they didn't want to talk to each other, afraid they didn't fuel the fires of anger. But you can feel the spirit force of it and the atmosphere. Um, I don't know that everything is demonically induced. I don't know where the fine lines are drawn, but I do know this, that, that Jesus walked into an atmosphere and he said, I can't do miracles here. Uh, I can't do miracles here. Jesus, we're talking about the Son of God. Uh, uh, he said, because the atmosphere is filled with such negativity. I can't, I can't, uh, uh, and it wasn't the demons, it was them allowing that spirit or that whatever, that negativity to override any, any positive thing that could be done there. And so, anyway, yeah, uh, I agree with you. Uh, sometimes we need to recognize the spirit force uh, rather than just the situations that we're dealing with. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, I, another thing, too, I, I only learned how to do this a lot in the last couple of years, is uh, I wish I'd learned it a lot sooner, is when you're praying and you feel a real lift in the spirit, you know, a real up, and, and, and I think you guys know the difference I'm talking about, that shift you feel when something leaves. Now, we saw it really dramatically uh, years ago. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, Paul and I were up in San Francisco. And we've been doing a lot of ministry on Broadway, which is a, a whole string of, of strip joints, okay? And uh, we took a youth with a mission team out there, and we decided uh, we'd just go out there and spend the night in, uh, in, in worship and prayer. And I'd, I'd been fasting, I think, like 18 days at that time, so I was kind of spiritually kind of prepped up for this. And we went out there, and, and, and we just started interceding. We were there for, how long was it, dear? About an hour and a half, two hours? About, yeah, so we were out there about an hour and a half, two hours. We're just, we're just interceding before God. And suddenly, we're just, bam. You know, we, we felt a shift, a huge, like a seismic shift in the spirit. Something big, not, not the little one you kind of feel, just that little thing. We felt a big one. And I, I had my eyes open at the time, and I actually saw it. It was night, because we got at night when, the, you know, when all the activity was. And I actually saw the street light get, I actually saw the light get brighter. It physically, when we felt that shift, everything got brighter. And I, I never realized that evil spirits could actually dim the lights, you know. And uh, we saw the light get brighter, and, and uh, we went, wow, you know, what was that? And everybody on the team was like, oh yeah, I felt that, you know. It's like an earthquake. And we all felt it at the same time, and we didn't really know specifically what to do, so we, we had some anointing oil. So we went up and down the strip, and every single one of these strip joints, we went over and anointed their, the doors with oil <laughs> and prayed for them, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, one of the doors, there's a, a, a girl standing in the doorway, and she said, what are you doing? I said, they said we're, we're, we're praying for you guys. We care about you, and, and we're praying for you, for your safety and for God to be close to you. She said, 
great, do that more. <laughs> you always assume people won't want that to happen. You know, you don't know, you know. We found out later, we watched, it was in the news, that over the next uh, two months, I think it was, six of those places closed down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, 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 we saw a shift in the supernatural, and there was an evil presence on that, on that street that, that, we, that we caused to leave. Well, the same way when you feel the, the presence of the Holy Spirit come, I do not want us to get focused on this, on, on the uh, specifics of it, but usually when you feel that, it means an angel has come. Okay? Now, we don't get focused on angels any more than we get focused on demons. Because they are not what our life is about. There, no angels died for our sins. No angels want us to be their bride for eternity. Okay? Uh, demons don't either. So I, I'm not focused on demons, I'm not focused on angels, but I'm not stupid either. When there's a demon in the room, I, I, I want to do something about it. When there's an angel in the room, and I realized I wasn't doing this properly, when an angel comes, you feel that presence, don't assume that it's going to be there an hour later when you go wash the dishes. Okay? So when you feel that presence come, stop. Yeah. Stop and, 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 and focus in that presence. Stay in it for as long as the visitation lasts. And the visitations don't last forever. You know, I, I hear stories of, you know, enormous visitations. Jim Gall's wife had a visitation for like six weeks for crying out loud. And, the woman almost, you know, almost didn't make it through it physically because it was so much on her. But uh, boy, the anointing on that woman was crazy afterwards, so we went to one of her services. But uh, <clears throat> the, the, the visitations don't last forever, and <clears throat> when they do lift, it's okay to move on. But stop and honor that visitation. Honor, the, honor the, the Holy Spirit when He comes, and even then the devil will try to get you to leave. Okay? He'll try to find some reason. And you'll start thinking, oh, it'll still be here when I get back. Probably not. Probably not. And you will have missed your day of visitation. You don't want to miss your day of visitation when, you know, you pray and pray for the Holy Spirit to come. If you think of the Holy Spirit as an impersonal force and not realize, number one, he's a person. Number two, his presence is often carried by angels. And those angels come. <clears throat> and are the angels going to stay while well, you're off doing something else? The answer is probably not. They're, they're, they're going to stay as long, like the Holy Spirit. They're going to stay as long as they're honored. That's right. and, you, and you dishonor them and they will leave and you'll have missed that point of visitation. So <clears throat> I, just wanted, I just wanted to throw that in. In, in dealing with <clears throat> spirits, I like to think of there, there, there's, two, there's two ways that I know of really. I'm, there may be others, but two ways basically to deal with them. Number one is to cast them out. Number two is to bake them out. And I don't know any other term except bake about, so I'll talk about that. <laughs> I, I, I got that idea when Paula and I first went up to San Francisco. We were living in this house that uh, was very, very, very old. And it had an oven that was so old that to, light the, <clears throat> that to light the burners in the oven, you had to light a match and hold it in, in this little spigot here, and it would suck the flame down, down the little hole and uh, turn that thing on. Anybody? Ever see stoves like that? They're, they're really old, <clears throat> and they're really scary, okay? <laughs> you don't want to use one. If you've got one, replace it. It's not worth it, okay? So we had one of those, and one day, and I, 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 I don't want to be gross, but this place we went in there, it was absolutely filthy. It was filthy. The people that lived there before us left cracker crumbs and cookie crumbs, literally just scattered all over the floor and there were rats and roaches infesting this place to a level you could not imagine okay anyway uh, <clears throat> they infested everything like i said including this oven so as as, as, I, as i'm uh, one time paul is heating up the uh, heating up the oven and i look and you know, you know at the top of the oven there's that little glass bar where you can see the little dials and stuff and there's a little glass panel across it in the old, in the old style ones and there are like six or seven roaches up in there just scrabbling around trying to get out. And I'm like, oh, that was so gross. It tastes like peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. I needed that little yes. picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't go on. I, keep <laughs> I can do that. Um, 
So these roaches are scrabbling around in there, and I realized that if I turn up the heat on the oven, the bad stuff starts leaving because it's uncomfortable. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so <clears throat> if I can turn up the heat in my spiritual life, a lot of these evil presences Amen. will leave on their own because they can't take the heat anymore. <clears throat> and quite honestly, that's actually the better way because they don't tend to come back <laughs> either near as much, you know? You, you, you're going right where I was going. Okay, go ahead, Rob. Um, there, there, there's a couple things here that I really, uh, uh, I, I put them down on my uh, notepad just a moment ago. Um, when the Spirit of God that lives in us, no, you're not, you're the temple, you're, you're the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And, and you were talking about being led by the Spirit of God. Um, when we're led by the Spirit of God, um, the leading of the Holy Spirit is very clear about where God, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is going to take you. Um, there will be uh, actions, a course of actions, that are very clear. And, and you know by the prompting or the leading or the nudging of whatever atmospheric condition you're feeling, whether it's God or it's not. And, and so it made it very clear in, in, in the um, Galatians, when he began to talk, he said, okay, he said, you walk in the Spirit, you don't want to fulfill or you don't want to do the things that you shouldn't do. When God is leading, when the Holy Spirit is leading you, is leading you, you won't want to do, and then he begins to say, you won't want to do this. First of all, you won't want to hurt each other. You won't want to devour each other. You don't want to talk negative about each other. That's you, you, if, if you do, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's very clear. You won't devour one another. You won't talk against each other. And then he, then he said, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, can I ask you a question? Have you ever felt uh, just a, a, a freedom in your atmosphere, your mind, your thoughts, a freedom when you walk into an atmosphere or a church service, and there's just such a liberty to praise God. There's a liberty to hear the Word of God. There's not all these restraints and constraints. But have you ever walked into an atmosphere that was just absolutely consumed with heaviness and constraints and you felt bound and you felt... Uh, how many want to, have you ever Have you ever felt like there was lead weights on your hands when you wanted to praise God? You wanted to lift them? Or you wanted to just lift your voice and praise God? Have you ever just felt a binding, uh, a real stronghold, a real confining feeling of, I don't feel like in this atmosphere to praise God. I don't feel like in this, in this atmosphere to, to really uh, uh, have an intimacy with the Lord. You know, be real close to God. Uh, but it says, those that aren't led by the Holy Spirit, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under those principles. What are those principles? Adultery. You don't want to do that. The Holy Spirit's not leading you to cheat on your wife or your husband. If that, if that thought or that feeling or that atmosphere, come on, uh, there's not a person in this room that, that has not had a negative atmosphere. I'm talking about uh, 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 the temptation or a struggle in certain areas and, and in most areas of your life that, that uh, a spirit of lust, if you, if you haven't dealt with a spirit of lust, you're dead. You, you, you're not real. <laughs> come on. We all have. Now you say, well, you're a pastor. You're the pastor. You shouldn't say that. Everybody's dealt with it. But how you deal with it determines on whether you're led by the Holy Spirit. Right. People that pursue it. There's some people, uh, if someone flirts with them, they're headed down the, they're headed down that path in the wrong way. They, they can't pass an opportunity for someone to flirt with them or tell them they're, they're all that. It just, it just consumes their mind. They get, they get caught up in it because there's a desire to go in that direction. Witchcraft. Hatred, wrath, anger all the time, strife, heresies, envies, what everybody else has, murders, drunkenness, reveling, fighting all the time. That's not the Spirit of God. He's very clear. He said, if, these, if this atmosphere, if this feeling, if these thoughts are coming towards you, sometimes they're just feelings, sometimes there's thoughts, but sometimes the enemy will use an atmosphere condition that's why sometimes when you walk in here on a Sunday morning, and maybe I, I shouldn't clue you in on this, but I walk around this building over and over and over a long time before most of you get here, 
And then someone you hear, I'm here praying over every seat, uh, the atmosphere. I'm praying that there is a, 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 a warmth in the spirit. There's a receptivity. I'm praying if there's any negativity, if there's anything the enemy's trying to stop, that he's not able to do that. I pray a fresh anointing over every service. Uh, I, I spend all week praying over the anointing that's going to be over the sermon. Because I know that there is going to be, for the lack of a better term, a hindering force to everything. Whether, uh, I, I'll guarantee you, if you, you come to a praise practice and there'll be a hindering force. You, you come to a, you come to a, a, a service and there will, be a, there will be a choice. Will I be led by the Holy Spirit or will I be led by the flesh? And he didn't say a spirit here. He didn't say a demon. He said the flesh in which, the, which demons or the Holy Spirit can operate against. What are you going to yield to? And there, it, it's so clear, he said, if it's one of these things, when you, before you were a Christian, he said, you did all these things. But now, the evidence of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, and no, not angry all the time. Against such, there is no violation of the law. The Holy Spirit doesn't do anything that creates a violation against the presence of God. So let me, let me just encourage you. He said, if you live in the Spirit, then walk in the Spirit. In other words, follow the leading of what you know the Spirit of God is. Let's just, just 30 more seconds. How many here know that if it's something angry, uh, with animosity, malice, makes you want to say something against somebody, your, your spirit, your person, your mind knows that's not God. Come on, you know that. But a lot of us, even when we know it, and we know that it's not the Lord, and we know it's not the Spirit of God dealing with us, and not only dealing, but leading us, we just give it to the other direction. Amen? You live in the Spirit. In other words, you, you, you live in, in, in God. Let God live in you. Okay? Okay. And... When you have those things that are just continually, you know, happening, continually coming against you, just turn up the heat spiritually. You know, pray more. One of the best things I ever learned, I call it praying by the clock. And that is, I, I, I set a time. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to pray. I'm not just going to pray while I feel good. You know, I, I, you know I'm going to, I'll tell you what. If you say, I'm just going to pray as long as I feel good, trust me. The devil will let you feel good within five minutes if you're ready to go. Okay? That's all it takes. That feeling's over. That feeling's over. But, but you stay. You stay, you stay, you stay. If you're getting a lot of... Uh, Just trying to get it off. <laughs> if, 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 you're getting a lot, if you're getting a lot of feedback from your mind and stuff, of, of, you know, that, you know, all that stuff going on, stay until that breaks. You know, at least do that. But uh, I, I think I said this uh, last week, but my, my first experience was where it was taking a big old alarm clock into the church and winding it up and setting it for an hour and saying, I'm not going to, I'm not going to step foot out of here yeah. until it, until that, that alarm clock rings. And that was a turning point for me. Okay. It really was because I realized I could stay. I, I, I could stay it and, and I could, and, and I could pray through beyond just the feelings. But let's just take, a, let me take a minute to talk about the casting them out. And we're talking about you yourself, okay? Um, I, I, we're not talking about huge demonic manifestations. We're talking about these little guys, you know, the what are, little foxes that spoil the grapes or whatever you want to call it, okay? These little guys that you have authority over. So demon possession means it's actually taken over to where you don't have a lot of control left, okay? And it, and it definitely takes somebody else to cast it out. I didn't know much about this, and I still don't consider myself an expert, but uh, there's some books out there that are really helpful. And one of my favorites was a book by a man by the name of Don Basham, okay? And Don Basham wrote a book called Deliver Us From Evil. Excellent. Excellent book. So write it down, Don Basham, Deliver Us From Evil. It's an older one. came out, what, 74 or something like that? They stopped print, but they started again. I, I know, I, I just yeah. ordered one. Deliver Us From Evil, Don Basham. Yes, Don Bash, deliver us people. Great man. Uh, he was a man who didn't even believe in demons until he ran into them. <laughs> then he had a choice, either, either, either let them let run the place or, or deal with them. And he, he ended up having this, uh, going through the charismatic re uh, renewal movement, just as a whirlwind, casting demons out of literally pastors of churches of thousands, things like that. I mean, the, the ministry God gave him was incredible. 
But uh, <clears throat> the last chapter of this book, and you know, I think I have a copy of this who brought it, but uh, um, I'll, I'll bring it, I'll try to bring it next time. But uh, <clears throat> in, in Deliver of Evil, the last chapter, he says, here's how to cast them out yourself. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you right off, you're going to feel silly doing this. So find some place where nobody else is around, okay, get some private time, all right, and here's what I do. And I'll, I'll just tell you, I sit down and I say in the name of Jesus, any demonic, negative spirit, power, whatever, in the name of Jesus, that has attached yourself to me, that is trying to attach yourself to my body, okay, because the little guys, they could do that, you know, cancer is a little spirit attached to you, you know, it really is. I, I, I'm going to say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to identify yourself and tell me who you are, you know. And I'll sit there, and a name will just come, kind of come bubbling up in my mind. You know, and, okay, you know, and, oh, anger, you know, something like that. And <clears throat> sometimes I'll just say, I, I bind you in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, I break your power, I command you to leave me and never come back. Or sometimes, if it seems like a recurring thing, I'm not saying a whole conversation with demons, because I'm not interested in that, because they're not interesting creatures. Again, only Jesus is interesting, right? <laughs> But I'll even ask it. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him. I say, I command you to tell me by what authority, what authority you think you have to stay and harass me like this. And often a, a thought will come into my mind, something that I did maybe several years ago, you know, and, and, and I'll, I'll just go, oh, okay, and I'll repent of that, you know. Uh, I, I, I looked in the wrong place. I got angry at something. I, I let my anger get, get out of control. So I'll just, in the name of Jesus, you know, and, 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 and I'll realize that's like a little hole in, in, in the dike, letting this thing in and keep coming back in. I'll say, well, I need to close that hole. So, like I say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a demon and invite him to tea. I'm not going to have a long conversation with him. I'm not going to make him my friend, okay? But sometimes there's information that's helpful, and I keep, and I, I, I just say, I, I command you in the name of Jesus. So, uh, get the book, because the book describes this a lot better than I do, but uh, just, just try it, you know, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the first time I did it, there's about five or six things came up, you know, and uh, I dealt with them, and I felt a, a lot better, okay, and then a couple months later, I did it again and found there's only one or two things. And now, pretty frequently, I find maybe at most one thing, like, oh yeah, that's why my mind keeps going that direction. That's why I seem to be angry here and there. You know, there's, there's this little process that's, that's kind of attached itself to me and thinks it's got a little home here. You know? <laughs> so it's like a little kitty that goes in out of the rain, except they're not kitties, you know? So, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to overemphasize these things, but these are the things that bring us freedom. And, 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 and it, 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 it's freedom, it's freedom that we want. We want to walk in freedom. Amen? Yeah, so I wanted to, I, I, I wanted to give you that, and I'll, I'll try to get the Don Bashan book, but I'll, I'll actually read you that chapter. Yeah. If I could say something here. You know, uh, how many young Christians do we have that, um, when we start talking about some of these things, it's like flying right over your head. Um, you, you know, you've never, not, well, no, I'm, I'm serious, and some of you have been around 20 years, and you may now still know it. Uh, like, some people are not, have never really dealt with uh, what it means to cast out a spirit or cast down imaginations. But the word cast simply means to put away. Uh, you, you realize, okay, there's a force working against me. There, there, there's, there's something that's working against my mind. I'm dealing with a lot of fear. I'm dealing with a lot of anger. I, and, and we put it in spiritual terms like uh, casting it out or casting it off. But, but uh, just to ease your mind, we're, we're not talking about an exorcism here like squirking eggs. Uh, we're talking about, you, you have to, uh, and, and there's a scripture that basically says this, for the weapons of your warfare, sometimes you're in a war in your mind. You're in a war in your spirit. You're, you're struggling in an area. You, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly, but the Bible says right here in 2 Corinthians, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of a stronghold. Which means that thing is taken, as you said, it, it's, have you ever had, and you used a good illustration, have you ever had a little kitten or cat come from next door somewhere and come over and, and start nibbling on food you had for, and it, it, as long as you'll feed it, it'll keep coming back. It'll, it, it's not even your home, but it, as long as you're feeding it, it'll keep coming back. As long as you entertain 
a, a spirit or an atmosphere of anger, uh, a criticism, uh, lust, uh, anything. When you entertain it, 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 it it's, it's welcomed. There's forces in this world. And, and I don't, I'm not going to sit up here and, and try to give you every little detail. But you either have to determine at a certain point, I don't want you around me. I don't like feeling angry. I don't like feeling jealous all the time. I don't like feeling lustful. I don't like feeling all these emotions I feel. So you have to put it off from you. I mean, I, and simply because, uh, and, and the weapons that you use in this warfare to say, I'm putting you off. This is what he says. You cast it down, first of all, before it gets a stronghold, before you ever feed it, it starts in imagination form. The most governing, strongest, controlling force in the world is not Russia, is not the nation of Russia, the nation of America, the nation of uh, Canada. Do you know what the strongest nation in the world is? Your imagination. Uh, Obama don't really rule my life that much. He has a little bit of control. What really rules your mind and, you, and really controls your thoughts is your imagination. So he starts here, he said, there in that second Corinthians, he said, cast down or put away from your imagination every high thing that would lift itself up against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. In other words, uh, you, you know, uh, break its hold on you by throwing it down, putting it down right away. Yes. Yes. About what you're speaking about. Yes. What if you wanted to pray for someone who didn't believe? Yes. And uh, that spirit you know would attack that person. And if you speak to him, it attacks you or me. I, make it a little more clear for me. I'd love well, to I had answer it. I friend that was atheist. Uh-huh. And I broke it off with him. I was warned by a black Catholic priest to mm -hmm. uh, take warning to move out because Satan would hide like a demon. Okay. Like a, a roaring lion. Okay. Well, recently I've been talking to him, and when I was submitting myself uh, about 10 to 7 days ago, maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. Reading um, and praising and learning God's word okay. through Christ. Mm -hmm. Later, I went to sleep and I was awoken. Mm -hmm. And I had to sleep with a light on because the spirits of what your partner is talking about yes. come a lot. Okay. But this time, I heard. You were feeling that force? No, I awoke and okay. I could hear a cat hearing. It was a purr. I thought it was a ghostly cat. It's a true story. Okay. If you'll hold just one second right there. See, that's why sometimes God allows someone like him, where I'm thinking, I'm wondering, I'm looking at him, wondering, is anybody getting this? But God dealt with him talking about a kitten, so he would help you to understand you're dealing about the same thing. Okay, so continue. Uh, I just wanted to share well, that. It's very clear what you're saying. I agree with um, staying away from things that carry the spirit, the evil spirit. Like yes. Life. I mean, I don't judge. But I came to a part of my heart where I wanted to say, well, why shouldn't I pray for this person who has this evilness around him right, that right. the devil's coming to me? Because mm -hmm. he said that Satan said, do, uh, do not tell no one that. And I could hear him mm. clear as they almost see him. Okay. Well, to the best of my ability to, to kind of work through what you're, because there seems like there's a, 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 a lot of emotional things going on there. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor, and, and but I don't always uh, read through things perfectly to the point that I can give you the best advice. I'm just going to say something to you. At no point do I ever know why a Christian, if you've accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, would not be able uh, to pray for someone else. Because if you're praying for someone else, you're praying for their good. And the Spirit of God is always through you praying for the betterment, the betterment of anybody that you're praying for. So, so I, I don't think that that, and, and I don't, and you know, I'm not one to easily rise up against somebody else's advice to you, but let me just say this. If you're a child of God, and if you've truly accepted Christ as your personal Savior, uh, you will love everyone, and, and, and no one will be outside the realm of your desire to pray for them, okay? Let me just say that. Uh, and it's not negative, and you can pray for their liberty, and you can pray for their freedom, and you can pray that God will minister to their lives. And you don't have to feel any guilt about it or any constraints about it. Okay? I just want to say from my experience with spiritual warfare, sometimes when you go to any camp or someone else, you have yeah. a really huge stronghold, and maybe you're not their spouse, you're not their parent. Right. So you really don't have the legal authority in the realm of the spirit over them. Authority? Mm -hmm. You're not their cousin. Right. So what happens is in the rules of engagement, you can't get this 
validation or backlash from anyone. Oh, yes, you can. And so I think that's what's happening to her. Oh, okay. Because okay. also there were some soul ties from that with an ex. Oh. Right? Right. So the soul ties get permission, and she's trying to be a covering for somebody she's broken away from. Oh. Uh, okay. So I didn't understand that. Thank yeah. you. Um, you know what? Can I, can I add something? Yes. But I think we're in the uh, ministry area. Uh, I know that this is an area probably that you have uh, dealt with, and I just feel like asking brother and sister uh, Rank, if this is an area you've dealt with and you have some insight, would you mind sharing for us? Well, it's always very sweet. Privately, actually, because if you have given the enemy legal right and opened the door to demonic things, mm -hmm. they can attack you through ignorance or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Demons try to enter whenever. No, Trauma. I... So, yeah, but I think it's something we could probably talk about um, privately. That's going to be a good idea. Yeah, and, 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 and they can deal more uh, precisely with what you're dealing with yeah. so that you walk away from here tonight with a yeah. real sense of exactly. joy and yeah. peace <laughs> and a real sense of balance. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, your name again? Yeah, Tina. Uh, let, let me encourage you before you leave tonight. Get with brother and sister, all right? And it, it, I think it'd just be a few moments. And they'll pray with you about it and how to deal with it. And you know, you brought up something so amazingly wonderful. Yeah. You know, uh, when dealing with these areas, uh, you have to know who you are in God, but you also have to know who God is in you. Yeah. And and you don't want to deal with things that you don't have the ability to deal with. And you were sharing with even as the youngest Christian and the youngest prayer warrior. Uh, you need to know, and, and you brought up the word legal, your, your authoritative okay. rights. And yeah. I, I, I learned that when I was 19, I was filled with spirit. Yeah. I had no charismatic background, no Pentecostal background. Nobody, everybody I knew was frozen, chosen. So I was filled with spirit. My dad had gone from Baptist to New Age. And I realized, I recognized after I got filled with the Holy Spirit that he was demon oppressed and major possessed. So as a young woman at 20, 21, I was praying and I was in my father's house. And I was rebuking a spirit, finding a spirit off of him of uh, suggest, suggest, seducing spirits, doctrine to demons, because he was into new age. Mm -hmm. He started going off, I am God. And there was a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I got attacked by a demon that night, mm -hmm. really bad. And later on, many years later, I, was, I asked God, why did mm -hmm. that demon attack me? And then my father taught me that you didn't have the legal authority. Your dad wasn't announcing that. It was his house. That's his house. That he was like, right to be there. You cannot get out of his house unless he wants it. Yeah. So that's the rules of engagement. Is it like trying to kill you? Oh yeah, trying to kill me. You know, you know, I, 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 I was. I'm going to just give a small. Um, you, you brought up a term that is that is very uh, delicate, and that's called rule, rules of engagement. Uh, there's guidelines yeah. to every every step as you're being led by the Holy Spirit. It will always be clearly balanced by the Word of God. We are not only Spirit-led, but we're Word-fed, which means if, if, if we're growing and we're being fed and being led, it's by the Spirit, but it's also by the Word. The Spirit will never deviate from the Word. I have found that uh, in doing what you're talking about, uh, that's why we've, we've already been talking, uh, uh, the three of us who have been teaching in this, that it'd be very important that you not be led into something you can't handle. Yeah. And that that um, when we talk about the Holy, that we make sure that each one of you have not only received Christ your personal Savior, but if you're going to deal with any with strongholds or anything that's highly high levels of sp spiritual sensitivity, that you be filled with the Holy Ghost right. and understand what it is uh, before you move into prophecy and other gifts, know, know about the Holy Spirit in you. We've already talked about that, knowing it's so important. The one thing that I would never want to do, and I know uh, uh, sitting here, is uh, throw you in a battle you weren't prepared for. To throw you into an unnecessary struggle that you were not ready for, or trained or taught in. And yes, it's true. I've watched people who have thought that somehow that they knew enough, but they were only new enough to be dangerous. <laughs> and this is where you've heard me say so many times, there's people who are gifted enough to stir up devils, but they are not anointed enough, or they don't know the level of anointing that they have or, or the authority that they have. Now, we'll all differ on opinions here about at levels of engagement. I'll guarantee you, from each of our uh, studies, each of us are at a different point. And most of that is through experience 
and, and, and through, uh, uh, you know, uh, dealing. I mean, I've dealt with demonic spirits that were so strong that they could take grown men and throw them across the room. I, I've, watched, I've watched people completely contort. I've watched things that, would, that I don't even want to talk about in front of you because uh, that, knew, that scared everybody else in the room because they, they would literally say things like, they'd bring up things that nobody else knew. They'd point to just one person and say, you don't have no right to talk to me. And they use that term. And you go, uh, you have no right to talk to me. You just went out and cheated on your wife three weeks ago. And all of a sudden, start throwing stuff out. But that person immediately backed off to run out of the room. Or somebody back <laughs> off. Because they didn't want exposure. Okay? Well, the thing is, uh, when you don't know how to deal with something, and you don't, uh, I mean, first thing I do is, is you have to take authority, but you have to know how to take authority. And, and, you, and, and these are not things to just learn sitting in a classroom, I'll guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. Sitting here, I was talking for a few minutes. When you're dealing with diabolical powers, when you're dealing with strongholds, I deal with it all the time in the area of how God is going to develop this church. Because we're not just growing physically. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. We are growing spiritually at the same time. And God is drawing people that are hungry, but not people who are thirsty to get drank. <laughs> Uh, they, 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 they want to be led into the things of God, but they don't want to be led into a We don't want to lead you into a warfare that you're not prepared for. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, go ahead. I'm sure. Well, and, and see, this, this, is, this is why I say it again and again. This is not about looking at demons. It's about looking at the Lord. Exactly. Because, see, see here, here's the thing. As you pursue Christ, yes. you deal with demons when he deals with them. And when he deals with them, it's the right time. So I would just say back off, That's spend the time pursuing him. I don't think it was about me so much as, so much it's true what we talked about, and I agree with you, I, I probably may not, I am a sinner, I have, but I know what I do and where I've been and who I am. And March 2nd, 2010, Lord God Jesus talked to me out loud in, in my kitchen. And he said, Tina, listen to your heart. It was the most amazing voice beyond biology, beyond sure. all. And time went by, and I think that he wanted, he, I think one lesson was that God says to be well enough alone if he doesn't believe in me. Okay. man doesn't believe in me, or Jesus. Yeah. You know, Tino, what, and, and, and God does, he, he talks to us even in bringing, bringing us to him. And, 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 and I feel like tonight, even God wants to use tonight as a means of drawing you closer to him and make decisions that he's possibly been dealing with you uh, for a season, uh, of taking steps to grow closer to him. And, 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 you know, God is a God of wisdom. And if he spoke to your heart, and you, and you really felt like he spoke to you, that, that, but he knew what was best for you at that time, that you needed to leave that situation alone. And hopefully you obeyed him and he did just that. He spoke to me like he did Moses. All right. Praise right God. Right he can do that. He spoke to another sinner named Saul and said, why are you persecuting me? Amen. And the voice was amazing. Wow. And, 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 that, and that, that's kind of my point. You know, the... <clears throat> I... Like I said, I, I have no interest in demons and their doings yeah. except as they get in the way of what, what God's called me to do. Yeah, and, right. and, and as they, they right. trap and hold the people that I love and then when God leads me to at the right time and place, it'll happen. So the the more I listen to him, the closer I draw to him. Now see, something we haven't talked about tonight we're going to get into is having rep reputation in the spirit. Because mm -hmm. there, there, there's, okay, healing the sick, all right? Healing the sick, as far as you doing it, is a piece of cake. It's real easy. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. Physically, there's no more you can do. But at that point, it goes into the spiritual realm, and then it becomes what is under the hood. When you go to cast out a demon, and you say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave, even saying it in the name of Jesus, you don't have the reputation in heaven to carry the weight of that statement. You may find yourself in trouble. So what you want to focus on is having the reputation in heaven. <laughs> Steve, did you have a word? Yeah, I do for Tina. Okay. <laughs> did you want to say it out loud or did you say it privately? Yeah. Tina, the fellow sitting next to you, I can ask you what, what your name is. Rick. 
Rick, Rick, you and Tina are boyfriend and girlfriend. Are you yeah. engaged? Are you married? What? No. Rick's been asking me about marriage. Yes, okay. you've been just recently to talking about marriage. Right. I am. Uh, well, that's I've a good thing. Been, I've never really been married. I have three children. Okay. I'm in a hospital and raise okay. my children by myself. All right. We're Rick. Police officers. Do you have any, you're a police officer, Rick? Do you have any, uh, uh, biblical, I'm going to use the word, Biblical Christian, not just Christian, because sometimes that's not really good, you know, because of all the different kinds of religions and things that are out there. Um, do you have any Bible background yourself? Did your parents make you do? Yeah, before we started the meeting, I asked the Lord who I could minister to just to say something to help encourage them. And that's what, uh, and the Lord told me both of you, but I didn't know if you were married, so I had to get that straight first. Now, uh, the Lord, you came here tonight for one reason. To get a confirmation from God, your Father in Heaven. To get a confirmation on what your priorities should be starting tomorrow morning. What your priorities are going to be because of God and His love for you, the plans for Him. Um, you could have had all kinds of backgrounds like myself as well. And, and I don't assume or presume anything about people I haven't met or spent more than one minute with, which I have not. But the word was for both of you, and not just for Tina, but for you too, Rick. That God, you're at a time in your life, and the reason I know you are, is because the last three years, uh, I'm gonna say the last, yeah, the last three years, both of you, where you've been, what you're doing, the plans you have, uh, what you'd like to do or not like to do, you both have had thoughts about having quality in your relationship and your marriage, if it happens, having quality. And you both don't know exactly how to do that. But you do know that if you get married without God's qualities, not perfection, but God's qualities, that marriage isn't going to work. And you both already know that. And God showed that to me before this meeting started to say to you, if you were open, and obviously you are now, I didn't know. But I would like to say tonight that there's some really eternal eternity and some eternal things happening for both of you. First individually, because you're not one spirit. You're not one life together yet, but you may be, I hope you are. But the plans to prepare for that are very important for both of you, for the quality of life that God wants to bring you into. And it's a real pleasure to meet you both. And I'm so glad that it came up this way. Instead of me going, hey, uh, what's your name? And then God wants to tell you something. <laughs> it's good that it came this way. Because everywhere we go and whoever we're with, God's got his hand on us to bring us into the next step of where we need to go in our life. It could be a small thing. It can be a humongous thing. But isn't that awesome? Yeah, and I'm happy for both of you. Well, let's go ahead and create a yes and license. Okay. Word for, for everyone. I don't need that. Please don't make me. I just felt this morning as I was I was praying that there was several here tonight that you come to places where you can't you find it even hard to say, Jesus, help me. And in the scripture in Psalms 38 9, Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not hidden from you. And sometimes that's all we can get out is a sigh. Yes. And a sigh is not very loud. But he hears it. Yes. He hears it. And there's the supernatural in that. So whenever you, you get under something and you feel like you just can't, you just let that sigh out. Yeah. And then I like to tell people, breathe in the Holy Spirit and breathe out. The jump. The jump. In Jesus' name. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to ask one thing. How many of you got out of, out of this tonight? All right. Good. Okay. Del Pena. Okay. Just to the Lord, not to go together, and you can see the like, like, 
I've never smoked in my life. I've never touched a cigarette. In fact, I think there's some of the nastiest things I've ever seen, and I hate the smell of them. To me, they smell like burning leaves, which is exactly what they are, you know. And when I was a kid, Dad would go out and burn the leaves out in the front yard, and I learned not to stand up with the leaves. You know, <laughs> you just don't want to smell them. And suddenly, I had this just desire for a cigarette. And I literally could actually see in my mind, right down the street where I could go down, and there was a, a, a corner store, where I had never even been to, but I could actually see where I could go into that store and walk up and get me a, a pack of cigarettes. And it was like I could even see inside the store. And I'm like, what in the world? And to me, it was funny, you know, because I'd never been... I, I, I actually, you know, you, you, you talk about the, the, the cat purring and stuff like that. There's times where I look at demons and go, wow, that was like the lamest attack I ever did see. You're going to purr at me like a cat? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just lay and enjoy this one. I don't know, you know. So, so, sometimes they're actually a little humorous, some of the attacks that come at you, I mean, some are not, you know, but uh, some are actually a little humorous. I'm like, I don't have the slightest, there's nothing in me that wants a cigarette, but this desire is there. So I laid there and just kept praying, and uh, after a while it passed away. So I asked the Lord afterwards, I said, what was that? And it was a strong feeling. And the Lord showed me that someone who had been a lifelong smoker had passed away, and uh, the, the, the smoking spirit that they had accumulated was, uh, was looking for a home. And, and it drifted by, and, and just, I was in the way, I guess, and it just was checking me out to see if I would give it a home. And when I didn't, it, 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 it went off someplace else. So, I, I don't want to say it's complicated, because once you kind of understand how it works, it's like, oh, okay, you know, I, I see how that works there. I want to say something. What you said is so true. And, and I'm not even going to try to make it to find you that. It's, it, it can start off as a, an impression, a thought. And he said, you've got to be quick. And, and to answer your question, you have to be quick. 
it may start off, uh, the enemy is always looking for what you call asset access or entrance. Uh, and, and you can put it off at the beginning. It's like somebody coming into your life that wants access to greater levels of your life, more attention, more time. Uh, a, a, a demonic spirit could do that. And it will start just simply uh, with a temptation, a spirit of lust or a spirit of, that, that manifests itself in a different way. And it starts off as a thought. If you entertain it, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger until it takes over more of your time, more of your energy, more of your processing. And you, because you give it excess. That's why he said, to be quick, your, your warfare is to quickly, he said, take revenge. I mean, how dare you to try to take over my life? Is what he said. To take revenge quickly to every spirit that would be, cause you to be disobedient to the presence of the power of God. Okay? So what you were saying is, it, it can start off with the slightest impression. It can start off as a thought. If you entertain it, you give room to it, you nurture it. Uh, it can it can get stronger and stronger, and it will. And you open the door. Too. You open the door wide open. Now, uh, just saying one more thing, and this is out there, and I really I'm hesitant to say this, but when I pray against strongholds that have taken possession or uh, reaches of points, there's different levels. There's there's depression, suppression, uh, you know. But they can take over a, a person that yields to that level. But if they ever do, I I try to get everyone that I feel is of weak faith. Or people that don't understand. Because demons are going to go somewhere. They're going to find someone who will uh, let them take control. Or, 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 or indwell. Or, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And that's why that, that uh, uh, we're very careful if we're praying against strongholds of spirits. That uh, we, we don't have weak individuals, even weak Christians, uh, to stay in the room. Because uh, that... Place is looking for someone else that will enter, for someone else that will. I'll just use this term. Will entertain them. Will allow them to, to have a, a a living place, a dwelling place, a, a place to where they can stay. And that's why we say, be quick. And that's what I'm going to tell you. Be quick at any point that a spirit, a, an atmosphere of lust or an atmosphere of addictions, an atmosphere that's a, of bondage that comes into your life. Be quick. In whatever levels of power you have to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and you have no right in my life. I am a child of God. And whatever level it tries to have interest. Amen? And let me just say that. Does that answer your question? All right. Uh, the other thing my friend that was a uh, uh, satanic high priest said was, he said, as this, these thoughts grow, there does come a point where they get almost like a certain size, you might say, where they become a doorway for a demon to come through. So... That's, that's, that's kind of where it ends up, where suddenly you find that more than just a bundle of thoughts, more than just you're dealing with this kind of entity, suddenly there is something there. You know, and that's what you don't want. That's where uh, sometimes a thought comes away, but eventually when that thing uh, just overtakes them. Uh, you know, you work, you work as a policeman, then you've worked, you've worked in settings where you see people that are so driven. And you go, well, how could somebody get so driven? That, that they, 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 they have a loving wife, a wonderful family, but they, they find themselves driving down here to, to this, uh, this uh, uh, you know, girly bar over here. And they can't stay away. And they've got a wife that will plead with them and love them and, and, and cry over them. And, and, and kids that want daddy to come home. But something is driving them. They've lost control. This thing's taking control. But, but there's certain points of access and permission to where you just allow it to happen and then... And, and it, could, it just keeps getting greater and greater levels. So if you've, if you've seen that in the natural, you have to understand how stronger it gets in the realms where you can't even see. <coughs> the enemy wants greater access to your life and your mind. But so does the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he will lead you in the right direction. Yes. He's saying to every one of you here tonight, the Holy Ghost is saying, let me have full access. Yes. Let me have control of your thoughts. And, 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 and that's what you're saying. Give Jesus. Yes. He, he is the author and the finisher of your faith. Give him the control. He won't lead you into bondage, addictions, or dysfunctionalism. He will lead you into freedom. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And, and trust me, I, I, I can tell you that if evil spirits had much, had much power and really could harm you when you're serving the Lord, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Rob wouldn't be here talking to you. Stephen Lessig wouldn't be here to teach you because he would have taken us all out years ago. Trust, trust us on that one. Well, let's pray and be dismissed.
Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful time, Lord God, for this good teaching. I thank you for this band of warriors, Lord God, that you're raising up, Lord, that have an interest in the deeper things of God and the deeper things of the Spirit. Go with us, Lord God, and I pray that all these things that are said would take root and take fruition, Lord God, to draw us closer to you, Lord God, to turn up the heat, Lord God, turn up the heat in our kitchens, just fire up our ovens, Lord God, and, and, and just bake, bake those half-hearted things out, Lord. Thank you for it, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's true. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.